Hi, it's Liz Needham here. Let's have a look at question 1a part 2 from the 2019 exam. So I've got a table there and that's the table I made in the previous video. So if you're not sure how we did that, feel free to watch that previous video. So the question part 2 says, is it more likely? And as soon as I see those words more likely, my brain goes straight away to relative risk. So this is something that we need to know. When we talk about more likely, relative risk is a really good place to go. And it talks about if it's more likely for a student to be male if they are in the junior school or if they are in the senior school. So it's talking about the probability of being male given that they are in the junior school. And we want to compare that with the probability of being male given that they are in the senior school. So this is the ratio that we want to form. So let's take these one piece at a time. I'll just change colour. So the first one, the probability of being male, given that we're in the junior school. So if I just look at the junior school numbers now. So we've got 80 students in the junior school, of which 49 are male. So the probability of being male given junior is 49 out of 80. Then I need to find the probability of being male given senior. So now I'm going to look at the senior school. And you can see we've got 125 senior students, of whom 72 are male. So that is my probability on the bottom here, 72 out of 125. So now I want to calculate that, put that into my calculator, and I'm going to get a value here of 1.06. And I need to know what this means. So what it means is that the proportion on the top is 1.06 times bigger than the proportion on the bottom of that fraction. So that tells me that this probability on the top, the probability of male given junior, that is 1.06 times more than the number on the bottom. And that's what I want to write a sentence now to interpret. The probability of being male if they are in the junior school is 1.06 times more likely than if they are in the senior school. And when we come to mark this, so this getting all of this correct would get you through to a merit, but we can get part marks along the way. So if I got to either calculating this conditional probability here, or that conditional probability there, just on their own, then that would give me an achieved tick. So either of those would give me an achieved tick. If we get both of those conditional probabilities, and we get our conclusion correct, then that gives us our merit. Or our R. Thanks very much for watching.